beautiful in his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord he is good, he is God, and is he that maketh us and not we ourselves. We are the people and the sheep of this pastor. Enter into this gate with thanksgiving and into his court with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good and his mercy is everlasting and his truth enduring to all generations. Bless the name and the reading of God's holy and blessed word.
that God we serve, He's able to do it. And He will do it. Our God will do anything. Come on, Sister Hughes. Come on, get it out this morning. He can do anything.
grace and power. He can. I know he can. I know he can. He will. He will. He will. He will. Matter of fact, he will do just what he says. Cause and snacks. We have already come. The hypnologist was here, and the hypnologist would say, Give us a wake up in the morning. All right. Everything will be all right. Will be all right. All right but since we're here, yeah. since we are here, yeah. we are to honor that God, yeah. our God, who can do. That leads me right into the message for today, Daniel chapter 2, Daniel chapter 2. Look at a God who can do anything. Thank you, choir. We didn't plan it this way, but God did. Yes. Daniel chapter 2, beginning at verse number 46. Daniel chapter 2, beginning at verse 46, ending at verse 49. In the Old Testament, the book is Daniel. The chapter is 2, the verses are 46 through 49. If you would stand for the reading of God's word. And you found that you will discover these words. Then King Nebuchadnezzar hmm. fell on his face, prostrate before Daniel, and commanded that they should present an offering and incense to him. The king answered Daniel and said, truly, your God is the God of gods, the Lord of kings, and the revealer of secrets, since you could reveal this secret. Mm -hmm. Then the king promoted Daniel and gave him many great gifts, and he made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon, and chief administrator over all the wise men of Babylon. Also Daniel petitioned the king, and he set Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs of the province of Babylon. But Daniel sat, sat in the gate of the king. I want to talk about promotion by the king. Promotion by the king. Our world today is filled with people that are trying to move from one point to the other. People in apartments, apartments are trying to be promoted to houses. People in the ghetto are trying to be promoted to apartments other than the projects. Husbands and wives are struggling with relationships and they are asking God, how do we begin this year with a promotion? Single women want to be married. Single men thinking about it. Everybody wants a promotion. And today is a good time to talk to God about your promotion. People want to move from their hoopties to a reliable vehicle because they desire a promotion. Musicians all over churches, all over the world want to be known for their music, for their illustrations, and for their demonstrations of their gifts. Not to mention they want a little money to come along with them. Pastors all over the world are suffering from a lack of field, field pews. They want people to come back to church 
they want all of us to be promoted at least back to where we used to be. Deacons are praying prayers every single day and every single Sunday specifically that God will visit us and manifest himself in a way like never before. For they all, every church, everywhere, is looking for God to reveal himself, those that are open in the name of Jesus. <coughs> they want to see God because they want to be promoted. And they know that promotion does not come from the east. It does not come from the west. But it only comes from our God who is in heaven. If you're looking for a promotion on your job and you've been passed over, God is not asleep. He is still sitting on his throne. And God is not having to make a list and check it twice. You just keep giving your gifts to him. And God will promote you above those who are telling you what to do now. I'm a living witness. In your neighborhood, if you're having issues with your neighbors, and they just won't get it right, and you've talked to them, and you, you've told them, don't do it that way because it's affecting me. Just stay with the Lord. Don't pull your weapon out. Don't go over and give them a piece of your mind. Just wait till God promotes you. And if you don't get what you've been praying to receive, mm -hmm. don't give up on God. Mm -hmm. Because the choir says, mm -hmm. and God confirms mm -hmm. that our God mm -hmm. can do anything. Mm -hmm. Well, look at the text. Look at the text. We find these new Hebrew boys. They are new to Babylon. They have, it's for them. They have been brought over from Israel to Babylon. And I told you last week that the enemy wants to change your location. Mm -hmm. The enemy wants to change your diet. Mm -hmm. The enemy wants to change your attire. The enemy wants to change your culture. Mm -hmm. The enemy wants to change your music. All this leading up to is the enemy wants to change your worship. Mm -hmm. He wants you to focus on things that really doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. He wants you to focus on things that don't matter, and it doesn't matter at all. But he wants to get your attention, and he wants to captivate your attention. He wants to get your mind focused on other things other than worship. But just remember, it is our God mm -hmm. who can do anything. Mm -hmm. The king, the king, the king, the mayor, the king, the governor, the king, the, the president, the king, the vice president. We have to understand that everybody wanted their way. Mm -hmm. But when you don't do it God's way, it doesn't matter whether you sit in the state house or the white house. God is still on his throne, and we have to continue to trust him. Yes. And the text, in the text, we find these four Hebrew boys, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They changed their name, but they didn't change their worship. All right. Young people, don't get caught up in stuff that will pull you away from your worship. It's, it, is, it's, it is a pitiful shame when people pray continually for a job and they continue to ask God to bless them and God, if you bless me, I'm going to bless you. But the moment they win a $75,000 a year job, they give God $348 a year. You promised. You, know, you told the church. You told the church. You want me to get this job. Mm -hmm. And when we pray and we, we supplicate and we intercede for you and God, 
God admonishes our prayers. He answers our prayers. And he gives you what you ask. Yeah. Then you have chosen that I don't have time to worship God on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, don't ask me to show up on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. And while you're at it, God, forget about me bowing down and giving you prayers mm -hmm. throughout the week. Mm -hmm. Our God mm -hmm. is not sleeping. He's still watching. I told you last week, not only does he want to affect your physique and your appearance. Hmm. You see, just because you can pay for that wig doesn't mean that you're rich. Right. Just because you can pay for extensions doesn't mean that God has blessed you. Right. Just because, brother, you wear floaters, uh, uh, Stacy or Adams and and you really sharp on Sunday, it doesn't mean that it, it was a blessing from the Lord. All right. And just because you're doing good in the midst of your sin, it doesn't mean that God is not going to shut it down. So, uh, right. God yeah. has allowed the devil oh, yes, to taint yes. your mind. Yes. And you need to get back to him. I told you last week that God wants the best. Yes. God wants the brightest mm -hmm. and God wants the blessed mm -hmm. and just like God wants the best God wants the brightest God wants the blessed the devil yeah. is seeking to contaminate your mind yes. the devil wants you also mm -hmm. when we look at the text Nebuchadnezzar says go and get me the strong young man Men who look good. Men who have come over from, from the Jewish custom and we're going to train them to our custom for three years. Mm -hmm. And as we train them, we're going to change their names. We're going to tell them how to react. And we're going to tell them what to do. Mm -hmm. My first point to you, if you want a, a promotion from the king, and our king is God, if you really want a promotion from the king, my first point to you is don't compromise. No compromising. No one should compromise what God has placed in you. My first point, you cannot afford to compromise what God has dealt you. You can't afford to compromise. You, you can't afford to walk away from your character. Just so you can have somebody else look at you and say you got a good reputation. Mm -hmm. You see, reputation is what folks say about you. Mm -hmm. right, but your right. character is what you really are. Yes. God has placed character. I say to young folk, folk who are leaving and going to school, one of the most hellish places you will ever come upon is a college campus. That's right. Mm -hmm. But don't compromise your Sunday school lesson. Mm -hmm. Don't compromise your Bible study teaching. Don't compromise your worship and how you've been trained because there's a lot of stuff out there that's new. Mm -hmm. And it glitters. Mm -hmm. And it looks good. Yeah. But the devil has set you up to fail. Yeah. That's right. I say to young boys, young boys, don't get caught up in get rich schemes. Mm -hmm. okay. Because you either come, you get it. Yeah. Easy go, it leaves. I say, I say it to a young person, I said, but don't you know, don't you know? They said, well, it just happened all of a sudden. Mm. I mean, it was so easy to do this. Mm. And all of a sudden, I'm at rock bottom. Mm. I said to them, mm. it's easy to get in trouble. Mm. You don't have to even go looking for trouble. Trouble is looking to you. It's easy to get in trouble. It's hard to get out. But it's hard to get out. Yes, Lord. Mama, daddy, grandmama, granddaddy, uncle, auntie, all, everybody got to get on board to get you out of trouble. Yes, right. When it was so easy for you to get in trouble. Mm -hmm. You have to get to a point in your life where you understand that your character matters. Mm -hmm. Who you are makes a difference. Yes. How you carry yourself makes a difference to God. Even those of us who are of age, we have to watch what we say, yes. watch where we go, yes. watch how we carry ourselves, 
Because even the, the no good and ungodly king is wise. Yes, All right. So the king says, bring me good looking young men <coughs> that have no blemishes, that don't have any drama in their lives. You see, employers really don't want to put up with folks that's bringing in drama. They say stuff to you like this. You're not a good fit. Yeah, right. And young folk have come to the conclusion, well, they, their law and their, their guidelines say that they can't discriminate. Mm -hmm. Well, you're right. They can't discriminate by law. They just don't give you the job. That's right. You have to maintain your character. And if you're getting the job, forces you to change your godly character, no, that job is not for you. Right. But if you are not godly and you won't change your character and you conclude the job is not for you, you're right and you're going to miss out on a whole lot of other promotions because of your ungodly character. Mm -hmm. My first point to you is no compromise. Mm -hmm. Don't compromise. Don't compromise what your church has put in you. Don't compromise what your God has put in you. Don't compromise what your parents have labored and put in you. No compromise. Look at verse number 28. Let's find out that the king is going to kill everybody. He, he's sick and tired. He's sick and tired of being sick and tired of being sick and tired. The king is tired. The king has had a dream. And he went to the astronomers. He went to the magicians. He went to the soothsayers and he went to the sorcerers. And he asked them to tell me the dream that I just had. As a king, no man on earth can tell you your dream. And we certainly, if we don't know your dream, we certainly can't tell you what your dream means. He said, all right, I'm going to kill all of you. He said, I see you starving. I, I see you trying to, trying to get me to tell you my dream. If you are a soothsayer, well, if you are a magician, if, if you are a one who can read the stars, you ought to be able to tell me my dream and tell me what my dream means. So he calls on Daniel. In the midst of him putting a death decree on all of us, he calls on Daniel. When you get to verse number 28, Daniel is having a discussion with the king. Daniel says, I can't compromise. Daniel says, I'm going to stand up for my God regardless of who I stand before. So Daniel says, King, there is no man anywhere who can tell you your dream, nor the interpretation of your dream. But I have a God. And my God can not only tell you your dream, can not only interpret your dream, my God is the one that gave you the dream. I say to young people, don't, don't compromise. Don't, don't, don't compromise. Young girls, if he says, if you won't, he won't, say good, good riddance. Give me 50 feet. Move over. Go down the road. It's all right. I can't compromise. Young Sunday school boys get with some hellish girls. I mean some thuggish girls. Their names are thuggish. They act thuggish. They dress thuggish. They carry themselves thuggish. Anytime a woman will show everything she got on the internet, you don't need her. There's no secret to it. Your honeymoon has already been spoiled because everybody has seen it. Don't come. Young men, when you find some friends who will tell you that you need to sniff a little this, mm -hmm. swallow a little that, shoot a little that, let me tell you, you give strong drink, Lemuel's mama says to him in Proverbs 31, so you thought Proverbs 31 was only about the woman in Proverbs, but she began by telling her son, you only give strong drink to people who are looking forward to Paris. In other words, don't compromise your character. Your character 
It's important. So Daniel says, no, you're right, king. I can't tell you. You're right, king. I don't know. But I serve a God who's able to do everything. I serve a God who is omniscient. He's all-knowing. He's all-telling. He's omnipotent. He's all-powerful. He is sovereign. He does what he wants to do, when he wants to do it. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere at the same time. I serve a God like that. Whatever you do, don't let God down. In the face of people who are doing the wrong thing, young people, you ought to be praying over your food in school. You ought to be praying over your food in the presence of, of your friends. Yes. And when they ask you why you're doing that, you, you ought not make an excuse for it. Yes. Tell them the God I serve yes. is able to purify before it leaves the plate and before it touches my lips. All right. All right. One day I, I was coming around the corner and, and I stopped and I had a Coca-Cola. That's when Coca-Cola was, was Coca-Cola. It had a feel That's to it. right. That's right. And I knew it was going to tear me up the moment I put it in my mouth. No, right. But I stopped momentarily. I had nothing else in my hand but books and a Coca Cola. Hmm. And I bowed my head. I was by myself. I bowed my head. I prayed, Lord, bless me as I take and drink this drink. Bless it in Jesus' name. And I thank you for it. In the midst of my prayer, one of my students from discipleship ministry walked around the corner and he said, he asked me, so are you praying over your coke? Yeah. <clears throat> I replied to him, I pray over everything. Yeah. Right. Before I put the mint in my mouth, Lord bless it in the name yes. of Jesus. Because you don't know where it came from. You don't know what's really in it. You don't know what's going on around it. We just take it and we just eat it and we bless it. And if we don't bless it, we are running a course that will come to a dead end. Mm -hmm. So, no compromise. Mm -hmm. He says to us that Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, mm -hmm. they got to a point in their life where they had to bow down. I'm saying to you, no compromise. They got, a, got to a point in their lives where they changed the music and told them to bow to that music. And see, the devil will always try to make sure that you change the music that you respond to. All right. You know, I, I'm, I'm old and old school mm -hmm. with an old soul. Mm -hmm. So when Luther went out, of, I, I kept Luther in. Yeah. When, 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 when the girls came in, Destiny child, I was totally lost. Mm -hmm. But the fact of the matter is, the devil will always not only change your music, but he will also change your movement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some of the stuff I see, I wouldn't dare let my mama see. I'm like 58 that. years old, 58 and a half years old, 58 and three quarters years old. And there are some things, Brother Miles, that I see people do, I wouldn't dare. Boy, I would be shaking in my boots when I showed up in any of this city. Matter of fact, I wouldn't make it there. I get a phone call. And she says, sit down. Let me talk to you. I saw. Respect has to be a part of our character. We must have respect for ourselves, and therefore we won't put anything out there. Let me tell you, let me tell you, if you wonder, if you wonder at the end of the service why, why I say, I say, uh, if you have not repented and found yourself in sin like I do, let me just ask you a question. Mm. If you wonder why I say you are caught in sin like I am, mm -hmm. it's because I'm messed up even while I'm standing here. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I, I fall short daily. I mess up, I misspeak, I, I, I may have had the wrong attitude, I may have eaten the wrong thing. And, and one thing you have to understand, that it is a dangerous thing when you fall in sin, you get in sin, you act out in sin, and don't run to God. We have to run to God with it. If we, if we don't run to God with it, we will continue in our old path and we will destroy ourselves. That's right. That's right. A second point today. No crowds following. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't, don't follow the crowd. Don't, 
The crowd, the crowd. See, there's a wide road. And there is a narrow road. And the crowd is going down the wide road. Where everybody is traveling. When you look at these boys in this text, they didn't hang out with everybody else. Matter of fact, when you look at these boys in this text, they saved the lives of, of so many others. Daniel says, don't kill them. Let me take on them. And then this is what Daniel does. He goes back and he talks to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and says, now this is the deal, boys. The king has had a dream. And the king not only wants me to tell him the interpretation of the dream, but he wants me to actually tell him what his dream is. He says, what I want you to do, I want the three of you to pray. No crowd following. You can't follow the crowd because the crowd is not a praying group. You can't follow the crowd because the crowd doesn't have connection with God. You can't follow the crowd because the crowd is headed to destruction themselves. Don't follow the crowd. No crowd following. Be a leader. One thing I always told, told my friends, I said, brother, if I get in trouble, it won't be because you led me there. If I, if I get in trouble, I'm going to make my own mistake. Matter of fact, when I'm making my mistake, I don't want y'all with me anyway. Because I know you're my friend today. You may not be my friend tomorrow. And you may testify against me That's later on. So I'm going to make my own mistake without you present. That's right. Some people got to have a crowd. When I look, when I look at the discrimination, when I when I look at the presentness that exists in our world, it's always some scary person that if you confronted them one on one, they would fall down to the ground. But when they get in a crowd, they're big and bad. Yeah, that's right. I mean, they're, they're not bad one on one. They're not bad when you're talking to them to their face. But when they get a crowd, they are up front. They're carrying torches. They will burn this place down, and they nobody's gonna take over their country. It's because they got a crowd. But when you confront them one on one and say you're wrong, they will break down and cry. Have a conversation. Have a conversation with a brother. Uh, uh, we used to do Bible study together, so I called him brother. He used, to, he used to be ready for Bible study, so I called him brother. Mm -hmm. And when he saw my post that said, ladies and gentlemen, the presidents of the United States, President Bush was there, President Obama was there, President Clinton was there, mm -hmm. and that was it. This brother had to tell me that he has not seen so much hatred against one man in the church in all his days. I had to tell him right there since he broadcasted out. I had to tell him your daddy never had the conversation with you that mine had to have with me. I had to remind him just 40 miles removed from my hometown, Emmett Till, Emmett Till was killed and thrown in the bayou, in the lake, in the river. Right. I had to remind him that regardless of how you see it, it's not racism, it's just who I want to give honor to. And because of the racism and because of the preciousness, the day that they stormed the Capitol, he had to confess publicly, Lord, forgive me for my sin. Now, is that what it took for you to be forgiven? Is that what it took for you to be repentant? It's only because they're following yes, they're the right. crowd. Don't, don't follow the crowd. Follow Jesus. Right. Don't, don't follow the crowd. Don't, don't, don't follow everybody. We tell our children all the time. Don't follow the crowd. Daddy used to say it like this. You are a Davis. You're not a Weeks. You're not a Carter. You're not a Jones. You are a David. And when you're out there, I want your character to reflect that you are a David. All right, man. Don't follow the crowd. So I'm able to tell mom and dad, every bit of trouble I got in, I got in it on my own. I couldn't blame anybody because I wasn't following anybody. I got in the car, I spin the wheels, and daddy took the car. 
I got in by myself. My brother edged me on. He said, man, hit it one time. I hit it one time. He got out of the car, went in the house with daddy. He hit it one time. I couldn't blame him. I got into it all on my own. Because I was determined if I'm going to get in trouble, I'm not. And from that day forward, I never took him anywhere else with me. You can stay at home and beg and hang about on daddy if you want. Don't follow. Follow the crowd. My third point, and I leave you alone. No complaining. That's right. Don't complain. No complaining. When we look at the text, the Hebrew boys and Daniel, all four of them, had reason to complain about how they were being treated. But they didn't complain. Daniel went ahead and told the dream, and then he told the interpretation of the dream, and that's where we are today. When we find ourselves right here in the text, verse number 46, the king has been honored by death. The king's dream has been delivered to him. And Daniel says, in essence, that you are a good king. And God is going to bless you because you're a good king. If you just turn to God, God is going to bless you. So the king says, King Nebuchadnezzar says, as he fell prostrate before Daniel. King Nebuchadnezzar says this. He says, for all of you who have seen this play out, I want you to present offerings and incense to Daniel. Let me just share with you. God will make your enemies bow down to you. I said God. God will make your enemies bow down to you. Not that you are a God. Not that you deserve to be bowed down to. God will humble your enemies right in your presence. It's amazing to me. The man who killed, who killed the, who killed the, the civil rights guy, mm -hmm. Megan Everett, who killed him, Everett, yeah. and he did not get convicted and in prison for thirty years. Yes, Lord. But God is not sleeping. No, he is not. Preach back home says it like this: When he was locked up and put in jail that Sunday morning. That's the first time he had an ounce of sleep in 30 long years. Uh -huh. Because if God does not arrest you on the scene, yeah. he will arrest your mind. He will arrest your heart. He will arrest, he will arrest you deep down within. And you can't get sleep. So when I pray, I want to pray, Lord. Lord, I, I, I'm not complaining. But my enemies, I ask you to bless them. Lord, I ask you to bless their families. Mm. I ask you to bless their health. Mm. I ask you to bless their strength. I ask you to bless their homes. Mm. And Lord, don't let them get an ounce of sleep until they turn their hearts right. toward you. Yeah. Don't complain about it. Mm -hmm. Don't negotiate. These boys never complain. Huh. They followed the instructions, but they never complained. They did not compromise what they believed. Some people God can't bless because you did the complain. Mm, that's right. God is just waiting to bless you, but you, you complain right. about the children, you complain about the house, you complain about the landlord, you complain about the job, yeah. you complain about your attitude, and that's your attitude. Mm -hmm. You complain about you go get your hair done, and then when you get through it, you complain about that. Mm -hmm. You complain about the shoes, complain about the clothes. You complain about the school. There, there are some members when the phone rang, I know it's nothing but a complaint. Mm -hmm. Some of them I just say, oh, Lord, how much? Do I really have to answer it? There are some members that I have not received one positive phone call in 18 years. But there are others who have chosen not to complain. There are others that when I, when I pick up the phone, it's a delight to hear your voice. There are others who, who understand that if I treat the pastor right, if I obey the leadership, then God will bless me. And if I choose to make his life miserable, it will not be good for me. 
I'm so glad that I have members. Praise your hand. I'm so glad I have members that love the Lord and they love the Lord so much until they don't complain. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that they love the Lord so much. So, in verse number 47, the king answered Daniel and said, Truly, your God is the God of gods. Let me tell you, if you work things out with the Lord, your enemies will not only honor you, but they will give honor to your God. Yes. And see, in fact, of the matter is, our motive, our goal is not that people honor us. The, uh, the goal is that God be glorified through us. Yep. We want God glorified. We are the salt of the earth. We, 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 are, we, we are the light of the world. We want God to be reflected to, through us. And as God is glorified through us, then God is able to bless us. So the enemies that we have will eternally glorify God. He says, he says, he says, truly your God is the God of gods, the Lord of kings. He's the revealer of secrets. I want to say to you now that God will put you on display so you can put him on display. God will, God will put you on display. Can God count on you? Can God count on you even in the little bitty things? Can God count on you in the midst of hard things? Can God count on you in the midst of a pandemic? Can God count on you? Can God count on you? Can God do you as he did Job? Though he slayed you. Yet will I trust. Don't they talk about me. Yet Job could not depend on his friends because they came against him. Couldn't even depend on his wife. Lord have mercy. The same one that says, when in good times, she says, we are one. What well, God blesses you and he blesses me. He couldn't depend on her. Couldn't depend on his friends. God kept looking to Jesus. Kept looking to God. The Hebrew writer says this, Glance at your issues, but looking ever to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. So he promoted Daniel. And check this out. When he promoted Daniel, Daniel spoke up for his buddies. Let me tell you, if you're going to hang out with a crowd, you need to hang out with a God type crowd. Because when a God type crowd gets blessed, you're going to be blessed. The text declares that not only did Daniel get a promotion, but Daniel got them promotions. Daniel got promotions for his friends. Let me tell you, if your friend get in trouble, guess what? You're going to be in trouble too. But when your friend get blessed of God, then your friend will remember you because he's a godly friend. Or she's a godly friend. You need friends that have connection with God. Here in the text, it's about the king giving Daniel a promotion. It's about the king listening to that. Check this out. We're in the middle of prayer and fasting. All right. In the midst of prayer and fasting, God is hearing from us. Yes. Yes. Just, just the book, the book, the book. God fix my prayer life, fix my prayer life. As we read the book, there's a journal that we're going through and there's a journey that we are on. As we look to, through this journal and as we take ourselves on this journey with God, over 6,000 people have already committed all over this nation to pray with us on our behalf. Over 6,000 people. Now you don't have your family just praying with you. Now you don't have your friends just praying with you. You have a whole body of Christ praying with you. And we're all praying for our issues and praying for each other's issues. Hey, God is getting ready to open up heaven. Pour us our blessings. We won't have room enough to receive if people will just pray. Yes, my people. Yes, Lord. No compromise. Yes. No pride for following. Hmm. And no complaint. Yes, Lord. In the text, it declares that Daniel was sitting right at the gate of the king. Yes. Now here he is. Doesn't deserve to be there. Yes. Here he is. Don't, don't have the right culture. Here he is. He's not the right color. Here he is. He's not the right race. But God promoted him. Yes. Yes. Other day, other day somebody said to me, you know, if you, you accept this job, 
with that, I wouldn't matter to that anyway. <laughs> I, I'm done with engineering. So, so he says, he said, but, but you know, you just don't be a token. I said, brother, I'm not, I, I'm not one who complain about that. I've been a token all my life. I don't mind being a token. I just want every two weeks to show up with the right amount on it. That's all I want. I don't mind young people get down off your high horse and let God bless you even though he blessed you through the enemy. Let God promote you even though he promote you through the enemy. Let God bless you in a way that even the enemy thinks he's holding you down, but he really lifting you up. Stay focused. Keep your focus. Remember your purpose. Obey God and watch what God does. Keep your focus. Remember your purpose. Obey God and watch what God does. Keep your focus. Remember your purpose. Obey God and watch what God does. When you keep your focus, when you remember your purpose, when you obey God, God moves on your behalf like never before. Somebody in the room already said, man, I can't do that. I'm not going to do that. But in order to have what others won't have, you must be willing to do what others won't do. All right, all right, all right. If you're going to have what others won't have, you must be willing to do what others won't do. Yes. It's even that way of salvation. Yes. If we're going to be saved, yes. we got to remember Jesus yes. did not compromise. Right. We must remember Jesus did not follow the crowd. He wasn't a crowd follower. We must remember that Jesus never complained. And he could have complained. He could have walked away. He could have called a legion of angels to pull him back. But he stayed on the cross. Over 2,000 years ago, Jesus set the example for you and he said it for me. Over 2,000 years ago, Jesus, the only begotten Son of God. Over 2,000 years ago, Jesus, the righteous King. Over 2,000 years ago, Jesus took a cross, I tell you. Over 2,000 years ago, before we were born, Jesus, the Son of God, he died on a star hill called Calvary. He gave up the ghost. Yes, they, yes, he did. He was raised up high. He gave up the ghost on the stub hill called Calvary. He died that day. Yes, he did. They took him off the cross. Laid him in a barber tomb. It was a barber tomb because he didn't need it too long. Early that third day morning, he rose from the dead. Jesus of Christ has set the example. No compromise. No crowd crying following. And no complaint. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. You ought to come to Jesus. Just as you are. Follow the example of the Hebrew boys. They came like they were. The door is open. If you never received Jesus as your personal Savior, this is your moment. You ought to try him. Jesus. Just let him in. The only thing you have to do to come to him is to leave the story that over 2,000 years ago, Jesus of Christ died on the stone hill called Calvary. He was buried in a barn too. And early that third day morning, he rose from the dead. The door is open. We believe that story. And if you're here and you're in between church homes, this is your moment. If you don't have a church home, just come right down the aisle. The door is open. I recommend the New Beginning Church. When Jesus is the captain of the ship, when Jesus is the one who controls things, I recommend you to begin to The door is open.
that you and I get in the daily Bible reading. And I want to put you on my list to make sure you get in the daily Bible reading. The daily Bible reading leads up to our Sunday school. So we are looking at the Sunday school lesson throughout the whole week. And uh, these two guys are very excited when you come to class and you're prepared, prepared for class. Amen. So it is our daily Bible reading that we are continuing with. Also, during the month of January, uh, we're going through the book and we're praying uh, daily and fasting. We're going through the book called Fix My Prayer Life. Fix My Prayer Life. And over 6,000 people throughout this nation have embarked upon this journey. We're going through the book Fix My Prayer Life. And you have a daily devotion for the morning, a daily devotion for the evening. And we're asking everybody to participate. Everybody, we're looking forward to your participation because this is what moves the hand of God. Prayer and fasting. Also, we're fasting. Uh, we're about one-third of the way there. Amen. We're about one-third of the way there. Somebody say, one-third. We're about one-third. We're about one-third of the way there. Remember, this is not a dietary plan. This is a fast. And we are, we're looking to hear from God. Isaiah says that this is the fast that breaks the bonds and breaks the yokes. This is the fast that set us free. This is the fast that gets God's attention. So we're fasting. We're doing the Daniel fast, which means when we're eating vegetables, we're eating fruit, we're eating nuts, we're drinking water, we're eating seeds, we're eating peanut butter. I told you Wednesday that it's nothing for me to get a big teaspoon of peanut butter walk around the house and finish it up. Amen? So we're, we're eating, some people are allergic to peanut butter and peanuts, so get you some nuts and eat them on the go. And I'm able to do 25 miles on a cycle with just a handful of peanut, uh, a handful of uh, nuts. So get you some nuts to go. And whenever you're ready to do 25 miles with me, come on, call me, and I'll give you some nuts. Amen? So we are, we're in prayer. We want to keep our protein up, keep our health up. But we want to bombard heaven. We want God to hear from us. We want God to hear from us. We want, we want God. We want God to hear from us. And we want the COVID-19 and the flu to get on the run. We need to hear from God. And God needs to hear from us. And I'm convinced through prayer, God will hear from us. Through fasting, God will hear from us. And the good thing is we will hear from heaven. And God will heal the land. If we want crime and disaster to get on the run, we need to ask God to fix it for us. So come on, join us. If you're not in this moment of fasting, we're eating fruit, vegetables, we're eating nuts, we're eating peanut butter, we're eating, we're eating wheat bread, no white, nothing white at all. So make sure that you get on this path. No dairy meats, no eggs. No dairy. Boy, I just killed the bunch of folk right there. Bam! Just dropped them out. But the fact of the matter is, you have to sacrifice something to hear from God. You have to put aside some things. And we are praying that God regulate our hearts and regulate our minds and bless us. We want God to bless us so we can be blessings to others. Amen? Amen. Bless the name of Jesus. Bless the name of Jesus. He is the name God. Has blessed us. In your prayer time this week, we want to lift up Charles Powell. We want to lift up Rasha and Marilyn. We're lifting up Sister Ann Paul. When you walked in today, you didn't see her there. We want to pray for her. We want to lift up Sister Ramona Mathis. We want to lift up the Galvan family. You didn't see them here this morning at 8 o'clock as usual. We're lifting that family before the Lord. We're lifting up Nicholas. We're praying for Sister Vivian Arthur, our grandson Nicholas. We're praying for Sister Lorene Moore. We're praying for Gary Simmons, Simon and family. We're praying for Benny M. Tisby. We're praying for Barry, the Barry family. We're praying for Sister Lillian Barrington. We're praying for Nash Carter. And certainly we are praying for God to eliminate all health uh, challenges including flu and coronavirus. We are lifting these things before the Lord. Will you join me now in prayer? Father God, we thank you. We bless you. We come before you because we realize that you are the great physician. You are the healer. You are the one that regulates our minds. 
You're the one, Father God, that makes us whole. We come to you in the name of Jesus. We say hallelujah to your name. We glorify you. We magnify you. God, we thank you, Father God, for these whose names have been called. We ask you to bless them now. Heal their bodies. Strengthen them. Support them, Father God. Bless them, Father God, on their journey. Father God, that they will be made whole. Bless them, Father God, in their mindset. Father God, that you will visit with them and they will visit with you. Now, Lord, we pray for the eradication of flu and coronavirus. Lord, your word teaches us that you can do anything. All we have to do is just believe. We believe that you can do it, Father God. We ask you to bless us now. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. We want to thank our visitors for visiting with us. If you're visiting, would you stand for us? If you're visiting for the first time, if you're visiting with us, please stand. We, we want to welcome you. If you're visiting with us, thank you so much for visiting with us. Thank you for visiting with us online. I see you standing in your house, standing at your job. Thank you so much for standing and visiting, visiting with us. Thank you so much for being a part of the New Beginning Church. Why don't we stand to be dismissed? But we're looking forward to, to praying for those on our list. We're looking forward to God doing something extraordinary. Why don't you pray something that you can't get done? Pray that God will be a blessing to you and your family. Amen. Amen. Will you have a seat for a minute, please? Thank you so much. Woo! Good God. Amen. I'm, I'm 58 and in three quarters now. We have, we have a contribution who's coming. Brother Miles is coming. And he is going to tell us about our contribution. Examples of what Jesus would have us to be. 
We pray, Father God, that you, you bless us, Father God, in our moments of prayer and fasting, that we will hear from heaven, that you will forgive our sins, that you will change our course of action, and we, Father God, will obey you in a mighty way. Bless every prayer warrior. Bless every person who has chosen to pray. Bless every person who has chosen to fast. And Lord, we ask you to continue to keep the victory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God.